Hey, everybody. My name is Mr. Dupa. That right there is Adam Obesis Rodriguez. Hello. And that guy is Drunk Dave Romero. Yeah. Uh, today's brew is the Killer Whale Cream Ale, uh, brewed right here in Florida. It's from the Bold City Brewery. It looks delicious. We're going to taste it. This is the One Baron Podcast. Do it. Yum, man. It's not a, uh, it's not mind blowing, you know. I want mind blowing beer. Well, you know what? <clears throat> I went to a, a a wine tasting when I was in um St. Augustine, mm-hmm. and they said that you have to first you gotta clear your palate with you know whatever hot dogs. I just ate two <laughs> hot dogs. My palate is clear. <laughs> Don't do it. So then you have to you have to take <clears throat> the first gulp. Then you've got to let it sit for a second, and then you got to take the second gulp. The second gulp is the real taste. Not the first one. The first mm-hmm. one, you've got all these different flavors right. and whatever is in your mouth. Because then you have the your palate is full of just that right. flavor. Right. Exactly. Kind of then you get the those, second one. Those thick things I just ate. So mm. one more time. One more time. That's good. We've been doing it wrong this entire time. Mm-hmm. Thanks. I mean, it didn't change it that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's still. I mean, it's pretty good, but. Cream ale. Right. I've I've had better cream ale. This is a basic bitch. Definitely. <laughs> this Just, beer will never be a bad bitch. This <laughs> beer is a basic bitch. I'm uh I'm uh, not crazy impressed with it. I was a little afraid that it was going to be another one of those beers that seems like it's just a little bit outside of the uh like the normal beer into the craft beer zone. They make a cream ale that I was expecting to be like this even a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This tastes more no, not lagerish, but it's there's no. I mean, a little bit. It doesn't give me that cream yeah, ale. It, re- feast it really taste. just tastes like a regular ale to me. Yeah. just like not much to it. Just right. Yeah, it's just it's pretty basic. And I mm-hmm. mean, on on the can itself, it says if you are tied to lagers, give this ale a shot. So, so they know what they're going right. in. Right. It, it's like that's what they're giving you. Yeah, is an is a lager tasting cream ale, which that doesn't even sound right. It's another middle of the road beer. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, disappointed. Well, okay, we had the the hopsecutioner. Yeah, so, last time that was yeah. a, that was Phenomenal. a high point. High point. Yeah. So that now one. we got to You know, we'll go low. I'm giving it two and a half. I was gonna give it two and a half. As was I. There you go. It's unanimous. Uh, you got to step it up, Bold City Brewery, because the Killer Whale gets a two and a half bottle caps out of six. This whale's beached. <laughs> Am I right? I Am I right? No. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, today's episode is episode seven. Uh, we're moving right along. It feels good. We got. We're getting a good good number going. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I changed my vote. Yeah, this is a two. I think we all kind of. Yeah, we after some deliberation. Um, ha- that half a bottle cap gets taken away. Yep. This is just, it's kind of middle of the road, just really. It's not even the middle of the road. You're right, because middle of the road would be average. Right, it's under the road. Yeah, this is on, on the, side the side of the, of the road. road. Yeah, yeah. It's to put some perspective in this, I would give like a Bud Light, like a quarter cap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just, just, you gets the quarter for just being beer. Right. But it gets nothing more. It's fizzy, it's part water. Yeah. <laughs> it's technically beer, and that's why it gets a bottle, or half a bottle cap. Quarter cap. <sighs> Quarter cap. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so Damn, all... That's a low rating. <laughs> it's very low. It's, all, it's low. not a zero, so it's not completely ruled out. I mean, right? I think it's more insulting to give something a quarter of a cap than, <laughs> the than just not rating it at all. Well, then what does like something like Keystone like it? Quarter cap. Quarter cap. So quarter same cap level? is just the just saying it's... like this is beer. Yep. Anything <laughs> that is classified as beer gets at least a quarter of a if cap. It says it on the can. This is beer. <laughs> this is beer. If you didn't realize. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. So you know what's funny is like I, all these craft beers we buy like say what kind of beer they are on them, but like Bud Light that says nothing about it being beer. It just says Bud Light. But you're right about that. So it's that. not. I don't even know if it's a lager or an ale or. I think anything. it's in the fine print. It says American Lager or something. It's bullshit. Is what it is. Well, yeah, because I mean. 
It's a uh, because Bud Budweiser is <laughs> like the original Budweiser is a lager, right? Or is yeah. it? A, it's a, lo- it's it's a lager. lager, right? Lager. Kind of sounds stupid if we don't know what fucking <laughs> Bud Light and Budweiser are. Yeah, yeah, Marco, you don't know what Bud Light and Budweiser are. I'm so stupid. I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> As he <laughs> checks the phone. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, most traditional American beers are lagers, mm-hmm. generally. Except yeah. for, like, Sam Adams and stuff like that. Um, Sam Adams is a lager. No, it's they a have the Boston lager. They have the... Oh, okay. Yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, yeah so it's it's mostly lagers. But, I mean, Sammy, I, Samuel Adams as a company has, you know, the different... different I mean, types, obviously, there's right. the IPA, and then they have a stout, and they're lager, so they're not... When you say Samuel Adams, you got to be specific. Yeah. I, I think they're they're, like... Main beer is the Boston Lager, so yeah, yeah that's true. That's the true. flagship beer. Yes, yes. So anyway, back <clears throat> to the review. Two's all around. Uh, yeah. After a little bit of deliberation, it's, this it's, sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two out of six. It yeah. sucks. It, it, I mean, it could be worse, but it's still <laughs> not good. Could be, it could be a Bud Light. Yeah, it's definitely not. Uh, we didn't buy Bud Light. I think this may be our first one that we'd say avoid. Yeah. 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 I would not buy this. Mm. Yeah. It's got a cool whale in it. It yeah. does. The brand looks really cool. Childhood made it bias. Mm-hmm. It's Shamu. <laughs> what? Saying Shamu as a child. <laughs> okay. You'll see the. You'll see it yeah. on the YouTube. Yeah. True. <clears throat> he looks but angry. He's got a tattoo. He does. And it says "Mom." It's uh, great. Uh, jumping right into the first topic, I think is one of the bigger news stories of the week, and it's going to be a developing story. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Adam, do you want to kind of give us the rundown? Sure. So Stephen Colbert. Uh, as we had mentioned before, gotten some internet virtual hot water with his oh, what was it? Ching Chong, uh, Ching Chong, uh, Ching Chong, Ding Dong. Yeah, there it is. Um, uh, Fun for Asians or whatever. Yeah, yeah, for the <laughs> right. Orientals or whatever. Right. So he got in some hot water, uh, specifically with the Asian community, and in particular, one activist in particular, Twitter activist. Mm-hmm. Um, what was her name? Sui Park. Was it Sui Park? Yeah, Sui Park. So it all died down, I'd say, within about a week or so. Mm-hmm. People weren't really talking about it anymore. And then out of the blue, it was announced that he's actually uh, Stephen Colbert is going to be taking over for David Letterman starting in 2015. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's a drastic change from him being in trouble with the Asian community. <laughs> yeah, he really parlayed that controversy. Into yeah. That. I guess the first thing is like, when did he find out about that? You think he's known for forever? You think he's known for the better part of this year? I don't know. I don't know because. Or do they, you think like Dave just called him one day? Or because of that uh, cancel Colbert thing, they got, it got their him enough attention. juice that yeah, yeah. it could have. I, I, you have to think that he was in consideration for it at yeah. least for the past year. Yeah, they had to have been probably even longer than that. They've probably been looking at him for a while. I mean. Um, Letterman signed on for two more years. Mm-hmm. So at, when he signed that contract, they had to have been thinking, in two years, we need to replace this guy. We need to start looking at people yeah. now. Yeah, probably at the very start of that. They knew the end date yeah. of it, and that's when they started looking. But you know, they the way that I have to think about it is they probably had a stable of people that they were looking at. Yeah. And they probably tried everybody out, like sort of a dry run, and saw who was strongest within it. Yeah. I can't see of any other way of them just handpicking a guy that has a completely different type of show right now. Yeah. And just being like, okay, let's see how this works. Yeah. It's I mean, how did Letterman get chosen? Shoot. That's a long... Yeah. I mean, he was a stand-up comedian right. that Carson really liked. Mm. And then he um, he got passed over for Jay Leno to take over the Tonight Show. Mm-hmm. But by this time, Letterman already had the Late Show. So he just stayed at the Late Show. And I, got, I think he moved channels... And then he's been at uh, CBS, I think. I think they're at CBS, I think right? It's CBS. He's been at CBS for like years, thirty years now. Years and years. Yeah, yeah I remember. Like, I can't remember you anybody can't. else hosting. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, because that's that's really our generation: Jay Leno, Letterman, mm-hmm. and then <clears throat> now uh, Kimmel, mm-hmm. Fallon. Fallon. Fallon is yeah. Fallon is definitely oh, the. Oh, I, I don't. I don't really consider him. I don't know, man. I mean, you, you don't know, like his show? It's all right. Kimmel I, or Fallon. I, I like Kimmel. Fallon, my problem with Fallon is, and this is kind of off the subject of Colbert, but my problem with Fallon is he just kind of feels so desperate, you know? Like, he's just, like, fucking obsessed with every guest that's on the show. Like, the stuff that he does with the guests is really good. He gets celebrities to go outside of their comfort zone and do, like, like the uh, the karaoke stuff and 
Well, I think Harrison Ford pierced his ear on one night. <laughs> I, like he gets people to do some crazy stuff, but like as far as the interview portion, he's just like, yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah, let's fucking do it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously without the f words, but he's just like really, really into it. And it's like pull it back, Fallon, he's pull it back. Constantly getting bleeped. And I mean, he's still he's still the guy at SNL who can't do a sketch. Right, he, he can't just keep it together. Can't, he just can't for the life right. of him. Just, I mean, he's been in the game for what? Mm -hmm. Be the better part of his life, and he just can't right. keep it together. But I feel like that's part of what makes him endearing. It definitely to a lot is of people. part of his charm, not endearing to me. Right. I mean, I watched his um the best of on Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's just him cracking his. up. That's all it is. Yeah. Some of it, it's it, it's infectious. When he loses it, right. and you kind of mm -hmm. lose it because it's like, man, he can't keep it together. He's he's supposed right. to be a professional, mm -hmm. and it makes you laugh. But at the same time, it's like. Get through the sketch, right. man. I want to hear the punchline. You can't even get to the punchline of the of the sketch. <laughs> That's why whenever they have that happen to like Will Ferrell in his sketches, like I die every time. Yeah, because he's it, usually can keep that, it together. That's my point is that it means something when Will Ferrell cracks right, up because exactly. it's like if he loses even, it, even you he know. can't keep it right. together yeah. for that. So, but yeah, I, I get what like you're saying. Like the uh, the uh, the Blue Oyster Cult, <laughs> that that bit, all of them lose it at, at one point. All of the them slow cowbell. Right. No one can keep it together on that one. So I give Fallon the benefit of the doubt on that one. But most of his sketches, he can't be, can't keep it together. Right. And that's the same with his show. Mm -hmm. Although his his show is really geared toward our age group. He's got the roots as the house band. Mm -hmm. And the guests he gets on there are always relevant guests. He never has just like, I mean, I love Conan. He's my favorite late night host. But some of the... Some of the people he gets on there are irrelevant, or some of the like musical guests on there are just like, who the fuck are these people? <laughs> or like he'll get like a stand. He has a lot of stand up comedians, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. He has indie stand up, which is cool, but it's like, it's not very relevant, which I thought it was a weird choice that he hosted the MTV Awards. Right. That was weird. Oh, man. That it was, was very strange. And it the reaction to it was just as I expected it to be. People thought, like he was out of touch, mm -hmm. and he might might have been just a little too old. One website, Salon.com. I don't know if you guys have ever gone to this website. You can but leave. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not. It's it's. Huh? They do. Yeah. It's not. Oh, it's not for your hair. No, it's not. It really isn't. Yeah. Go to the website. Yeah, it's no, not. Fine. It's people. Hey, I'm not judging. But <laughs> you're judging. You can leave. It sounds like you're judging. No. I'm not leaving. Are you enjoying until I get this out. I have to drink it. It's in my cup. <laughs> is that a rule? <laughs> but, it is a rule. I think it should be. Anyway, back to uh, Colbert. How do you guys think he he'll uh, he'll fit in? Do you think he'll do a good job? I mean, thinking of his show now, right? Do you that's, think he can hold an hour spot in late night? That's the biggest question right now. Is that we know Colbert as the parody of Colbert. Mm -hmm. We don't know the true Colbert, like who he actually is, as far as a show host. He's only been himself truly every once in a while within like outside of a show right so it's very few and far between we don't see him acting as a caricature of this you know like hyper conservative yeah radical republic i think um everybody is really excited about him taking over uh -huh. and i'm excited too but like you were saying <clears throat> we don't know what he's going to be like just being stephen colbert like, if, even if he's just going to be that. Right? Well, he said he's not going to be in character. So mm -hmm. he's going to be Stephen Colbert, not Stephen Colbert, the radical right wing. Who else do you think could have hosted? Well, before we get into that, the problem with him, the, the problem with choosing him and being excited about it is, is what made his interview so funny was that he played that character right. to each person. So when they would say something, he would bounce back with a, a radical right wing uh, opinion, which right. made the interviews hilarious. He can't do that anymore. Right. He has even, to even have like a, introducing right his, his, exactly. His, uh, it was you know if, his guest. He would hog all the attention. Right, mm -hmm. right. So and if it, he's just even do when that, he runs in, he does the yeah. wave to the crowd, yeah. and he's like, "It's he, all about me, me, he me." Introduces them, but then he gets the introduction. <clears throat> right. So he can't do that on late night exactly. because then it's just the Colbert Report on a different exactly. channel at a different mm -hmm. time. So that's why I was kind of like. I mean, it's an interesting choice, and I and I get the the logic. I don't really, I can't say I get the logic behind it because I don't see there were there wasn't a lot of people. I mean, who else could they have gotten? Craig Ferguson? No, mm. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Who you know? There's people like you. Sorry, like you were saying. Okay, let's go into that. Who else could they have gotten? Louis C.K. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Jerry Seinfeld. Nice. Jerry Seinfeld. Chris Rock. Nope. <clears throat> Why not? Chris Rock is not funny. Mm. You're tripping, man. Mm -hmm. You need to watch some Chris Rock stand. I have. And He's guess, fun. guess who didn't laugh? Drunk Dave. 
know. Oh, you're I like Chris Rock. Legend. Yeah, I, I do too. Um, Chris Rock too. I said Chris Rock because he was part of that whole yeah thing. <laughs> As he counseled the uh, Louis C.K. Yeah, he was like, "Why the fuck am I not getting on the show?" But anyway, uh, Craig Ferguson. A lot of a couple of people were saying, um, <clears throat> "Why didn't uh, Why didn't Conan get chosen? Mm-hmm. You know, why didn't he come back to uh, the earlier the, slot, the network?" Yeah. He's got his own thing going on. It's good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, I mean, but he was still because he's really cool with uh, Letterman. Him and Dave are mm-hmm. really good friends. So mm-hmm. well, fuck Leno. <laughs> fuck Leno. I'd say, fuck Leno. I'll yeah. say right now, fuck Leno. <laughs> I'm sure he's very offended. Yeah, he's this, gonna hear this. This, and he, this is a big deal. Oh my god, gonna... these kids. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of these cars am I gonna drive in? Today? <laughs> Beat the fuck out of this Marco Dupa character, huh? As he calls over the uh, handlers for his chin. But you know what? He can't. He can't come back and try to take Fallon's show because it's taken off, man. It's too big. Yeah, no, no, it's no. huge. It's uh, it's definitely become successful in its own right. Yeah. So, but yeah, okay. I, uh, I, I was surprised when they picked Colbert. Me too. Oh, yeah, I mean, it was. I didn't see him getting out of that Comedy Central right. niche. Yeah, niche. I mean, it's it's so good what he does right now. I, I don't know. So who are they going to replace Colbert with? Well, they were talking about some people either from – they have a pool of people, like the people who work – The uh, interns? On, well, the people who work on Jon Stewart's show. There's right, a lot Daily of people show. who um, right, they could pick from there. From. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they were like, you know, I mean, they could give a show to John Oliver. I mean, when he took over for right. Jon Stewart, people loved that yeah. shit. And he was funny. Doesn't, I like John Oliver. He's but funny. Doesn't he have a, uh, an HBO show now? I don't know. Does he? I think he does, yeah. I didn't see it's a, a Sunday night hourly like news report show. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, good for him then. I didn't see that. He parlayed that pretty quickly yep. into success. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, that summer he took over was really good. So yeah, I good enjoyed it. I enjoyed it surprisingly. I enjoyed um, it. I'll be honest. I like John Stewart more than Colbert. Yeah. I um, mean, that, that's not a really. Uh, I mean, it's not like a radical. Right. like, Wow, I can't believe he likes. But there's a lot of people that I know, especially in our age group, who. Prefer Colbert way more than mm-hmm. John Stewart, just because of the whole satirical thing. And... Yeah, they each have their own thing, though. Like, <laughs> I feel like they they're kind of cut from the same cloth, but their shows are very different within the same topics. Yeah, you know, just the, their approach to it. So now cho- choosing Colbert, I mean he he's an older guy. He's not too old. Definitely can hold the fort for the show for another thirty years if he mm-hmm. wants to take it to Letterman levels. Right. But as far as his target audience, like what what are they trying to uh, achieve by replacing Dave Letterman with a guy who can tap into the same audience as David Letterman? Because obviously, when they replaced Jay Leno with Jimmy Fallon, they were going for a younger audience. Mm-hmm. That was pretty obvious. Right. With Letterman, I feel like Colbert kind of he could tap into the same audience, right? Which I, I think is on purpose. So right? you think like they're saying like we don't want to stray too far from our winning formula. Like, well, Letterman was doing well. I think well. Colbert could bring in a younger one too. <laughs> he definitely could, like a more you know he could hit that. What's the what is it eighteen to twenty five or mm-hmm. the the younger age demographic? Right, but I feel like he's more geared toward the next demographic, the older demographic than that twenty five to fifty or something mm-hmm. like that. You know, it's, I think he's, he, you know, but but that's why it's so interesting because, like, his first show, you can't really base anything off of the Colbert Report because right. it's going to be such a drastic show. Right. It's going to be a show. totally different show. It's almost like when Conan was first chosen, he was an unknown guy. They just picked someone and they were like, and everybody was saying, who the fuck is this guy? And then when he finally started doing the show, people hated it for the first, like, three <laughs> years. I remember watching those really old Conan shows. I mean, they were kind of bad. <laughs> it was, yeah. They were like, kind of bad. Strung together with duct tape and stuff. Right. Like, I mean, I mean, he, he was all like, dance he had the fat the face. and Invisible like, strings. Right. With the, with the, he still does that. He still does he it, He still yeah. does that. That's old school. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, so the first couple of episodes were shit, and they they held on, and then, I mean, he turned it into a success. So, I mean, you don't really know. I mean, you kind of know where they were going. Like, Fallon, obviously, he had late night, so you mm-hmm. knew where, what he was going to do with it. Right. He didn't really change that much. Yeah. So. Well, my main thing is that if Fallon now owns that younger age demographic, why wouldn't they go for the older folks? And by older, I mean like, you know, well, 15 I feel like, and under. I feel like they're trying to compete, though, because you've got, okay, Kimmel's on ABC. Mm-hmm. 
Fallon's on, I'm almost positive, NBC, and Letterman's on CBS. I'm almost positive that's yeah. how it goes. Yes. So Kimmel and Fallon tap into the same audience, and they're competing now. Fallon, I think, is ahead just because by the nature of taking over the Tonight Show, mm-hmm. you know, it's going to be kind of hard to... But, I mean, we have to wait like a year or two yeah, to it's... really get real solid... Uh, Ratings. It's and the see, long, and see it's how the long game. Right. So we'll see so how it goes. We, so, I mean, once he takes over, it'll be Kimmel versus Fallon versus Colbert. Yeah. I think Colbert taps into a totally different audience. As far as, like, I'm just guessing just from his who watches his show and who I know watches his show. And then if he just comes over and he's just, like, serious, like, you know, late night with Stephen Colbert, you mm-hmm. know, like. But I think that. The reason that he taps into an older age demographic right now is because of the content of his show. Right. It's the news type of stuff that people go to. Right. And it taps into the younger audience, too, because it's obviously a, a parody view of the news. Right. But if he's not doing the news anymore, it's all entertainment and stuff. It's like it all depends on what the content of that show is now. Right. You know, so he, he may get those people that make the jump over to his new show that are currently watching his show now. But if they stick around, it all depends on what they you yeah, know, what they put on the show. Daniel Tosh. No, no way. You don't think so? <laughs> no, no way. No. Because his his brand of 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 comedy is just too much for for network. Yeah. He's good at doing his uh, you know, his caught on TV. It just gets too. Camera. I mean, his stand up is dark enough, and then when he does the the you know Tosh point oh, it just gets way too. He's you probably lighten it up though. He's not enough of a straight man though. That's yeah. The thing. And that's what I'm worried about with uh, Colbert is that he doesn't have enough of sort of a presence as himself. Yeah. So that 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 remains to be seen. If he has that, you know, it'd be awesome because I, I love what he's doing right now in yeah. his show. But it really could um, fall on its face. Yeah. Just be just by like what you're saying, like the nature of it is. I mean, he now he has to be himself. He's a totally different person now. Mm-hmm. Like when we when he finally takes over, it's going to be a totally different show. So we can't base any of our opinions, even though I was trying to. We can't really base any of our opinions on <laughs> the Colbert cool. Report, right? Like it's going to be a totally different thing. So if that happens in 2015. I guess we'll keep up with it. We'll wait and see. <laughs> we'll come back a year from now and let you guys know. Episode 107. <laughs> Hopefully, we get into the hundreds and then uh, we'll talk about it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, yes, it is the uh, the 20th anniversary. Of the release of Illmatic, which to the layman is one of the greatest rap records ever released. It's hip hop, Marco. By Nasir Jones. It is hip hop. It's one of the best records ever made. One of the best, I, I say the best, one of the best records, just the music, period, mm. in my opinion. Uh, it's the 20th anniversary, so they're making a big deal about it. They have a documentary coming out called Time is Illmatic. I want to watch it. looks pretty good. Is it like a, I heard it's like a three-part documentary or something like that? I don't know anything Online? about that. I, I heard that they they debuted it at the Tribeca Film Festival, mm-hmm. and people liked it. Cause, I don't know. I, mean, people. I remember the first time I heard it, it was uh, at the midnight release. Popped it in my tape player. The midnight and, release? Uh, yeah. And... Um, <laughs> My life was never the same since then. 1994? Yeah. Were you six? <laughs> yes. Listening to hardcore hip hop. <laughs> hardcore hip hop. I really related with it at the time. Because, uh. Growing up in the mean streets of Queensbridge. Yep. Couldn't get no, uh, sweets after eight. Heard that. Mm hmm. Had to eat all with my the, vegetables. With the tech on the dresser and, it, and a Snickers bar. Life was hard, man. Life was hard. What are these lyrics? Life was ill. Oh, I never actually listened to the album. Illmatic. Oh well, it's fine. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I think uh, I think we all listen to it. What do you think? I think we all listen to it too. <laughs> no, I want your real opinion on it. Oh, I mean, I liked it. It's good. It's First good. time I heard it was on the bus with this guy because he uh, would bring all of his albums to school. Yeah, just like he still does. <laughs> yep, just in his car. Every CD he owns. No. Has not learned his lesson. No. Uh, but yeah, Y'all you will dramatic. when somebody you know drops a fucking people's elbow into your window and snatches all that shit. It's not even close to all my CDs, Marco. You know that. Yeah, you're right. That's half. Mm-hmm. A little pretentious there. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> so I twirl my beard, and you know it, it pushes his glasses up his nose. <laughs> it's not even half. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Good. My opinion? Yeah. It's I agree, one of the greatest albums ever made, period. Mm-hmm. Um that that album in particular probably got me through most of high school. I played that honestly more than any other album that I, I owned during that time. So it, it got down to me memorizing basically the entire album. And uh yeah, yeah, I'd say it's in probably my top five albums of all time. Yeah. Period. <clears throat> I uh it, what's funny is they they've done this before. So they had the uh first obviously the initial release and then they had the 10th anniversary and now they have the 20th anniversary. Uh and my brother, he had the first release. He bought the first album when it came out. Mm-hmm. Well, not when it came out, but close to when it came out. <clears throat> and then I bought the 10th anniversary. So now I'm going to probably go out and, well, depending on what they have with the 20th anniversary, it depends on what they, because like the 10th anniversary, they had a couple remixes on right. the second disc. And oh, yeah, so it was, it was pretty cool. They had a different cover and they had better liner notes and all this stuff, mm. like inside stuff. So it was pretty cool. I don't know what they have with the 20th anniversary. It's but. just added remixes, <clears throat> I think. Maybe a couple unreleased tracks, yeah. stuff like that. But just added stuff to it. It doesn't need anything else, though. That's yeah. my thing, you know? Like, but it's just, I, I feel like it's just, it's cool to see it because it, it kind of shows the, uh, it's enduring nature, I guess. Just how mm-hmm. long it's lasted and how many people have had it and how long, you know, like seeing like the, because. Uh, how timeless I, it is. Right, exactly. I saw <laughs> a picture of, of. Um, the first release, then the twentieth an- or the tenth, the tenth anniversary, and then the twentieth anniversary, and they're different covers, and they were next to each other, and it was really cool seeing like all three of them, of uh, all three of them together in one picture, because it just kind of showed like, like you said, how timeless it right. was. Right. I heard it in middle school, so that was like I don't know eight years after it was released, <clears throat> but it's still, I mean, it informed everything that I did as an artist for for. Probably like the first like four or five years of like writing anything, mm-hmm. it informed all of that. Everything that I did was like, does this sound like Illmatic? I don't know, but I'm gonna make it sound like Illmatic. Every beat choice, every lyric for a while was just like, if it doesn't sound like Illmatic, then it doesn't it doesn't work. I need more samples. So yeah, it was it was a uh, it was big. I listened to it today. Coming actually on my way here, I mm-hmm. listened to it. Are you crying? I was a little bit. It was <laughs> it was an emotional experience. It's a touching album. I cried on the way there, but no, I mean it's it's just I mean everything about it is just like <clears throat> when I heard it, it didn't. It was not until I got older that I realized how good it was. But when I first heard it, it was just it was so simple. Like the thought behind it, I was just like, okay, this is the way that rap music is supposed to sound. Like I didn't think about it in a in a deeper way than just. That's just how it's supposed to sound. Like I was listening to at the time, I had like Ludacris, Will Word Smith. of Mouth, and fucking Willenium. Will Smith, and fucking uh, <laughs> Fifty Cent had come out around this time when I first heard it. It was like around two thousand one, really? two thousand two. So yeah, Jeez. well, not not Get Rich or Die Trying, but his mixtapes and stuff. Oh. And all that stuff was like, this is good. But when I finally popped in, when I finally stole Illmatic from my brother, because you know. He was locked up and I took his stuff. Anyway, <laughs> we'll move aside. That. <laughs> when I took, when I finally got my hands on it, like that, that, uh, it just, it just was perfect. Mm-hmm. It was just like, that's how music is supposed to, that's how rap music is supposed right. to be. Like every, all this other stuff, I, it doesn't touch it. Right. So I, it was, I had a, a similar experience with that where I, I ended up buying it for the 10th anniversary like you did, but I had heard it long before that from my cousin Jason. Mm-hmm. And, he was, you know, huge hip hop head, and I heard a drastic difference between stuff like Illmatic, stuff like uh, Thirty Six Chambers, and right. you know, like things of that era were drastically different in tone and sound. And I felt that they were more important without really knowing why. Mm-hmm. So even from the first times I I remember hearing them, I knew there was a difference in content than the stuff that you hear on the radio at the time. So. Moving forward, when I got a little bit older, I was in high school, the 10th anniversary came by, I picked it up and really started to digest it and understand it and try to really break down the lyrics. Then I got it. Mm. Then I really got it. And, you know, it's like you guys were saying, 
I can listen to it today and it's as good as I remember it being yeah. back then. And I can't say that about many things. We should listen to it. Mm. Yes, we should. You do have it on. I have yeah. it on vinyl. Yes, yeah. you do. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I want to listen to it on CD, Adam. Okay. Well, I have it on my iPod. Uh, even better. <laughs> Let's listen to it on MP3. Even, even mm -hmm. more. If you have it in black. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I think uh, there's definitely cause for celebration for that album. Not mm -hmm. a lot of albums. Uh, Wait, everybody, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Nas. Thank making you, Nas. More <laughs> music like that again. And yeah. not uh, like hip hop is dead or the yeah. N word. Oh, oh, I got a good song. It's called These Thing. Let me do that same thing again with the same sample. I'll make the song again and then we'll call it Hip Hop is Dead. Oh, that's a perfect idea. It makes perfect sense. Why wouldn't we do that? Because mm -hmm. it's stupid. It's the same song. That's why we wouldn't do it. Yeah, so uh, since the uh, first beer wasn't to our liking, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and try again with round two. This beer is from the Boulder Beer Company. It's called Shake Chocolate Porter. It looks really delicious. We're hoping that it's a little more than two bottle caps out of six. Here we go with round two. I hope it's more better. And there's your third. Ready? Pull up. Pull up. Oh. Nobody even got a scent of that? Did not get a whiff. Nope. That's another thing you're supposed to do when you taste wine. You're supposed to sniff it first. Well, this is beer, Marco. I know that. I'm just saying, man. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. This is uh, very reminiscent of the uh, chocolate wheat wow. last week. That's very chocolatey smelling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. <clears throat> Yumma. Let's do the second taste. Although that one was pretty good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. It's um it's very chocolatey like last episode's uh shop top chocolate, but it's yeah. not like overbearing chocolate. Right. It's right. Like, just the right amount where it's uh you can taste it and you know that there's chocolate in it, but mm -hmm. it's not like this is so sweet right. chocolate. It's not overbearing. Right, right. Yeah, that's I I like chocolate. But that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I like chocolate. Good job, Marco. Four <laughs> and a half cup. <clears throat> four and a half caps. I'm going to uh, go straight four. I go with four. <laughs> that's really like As it. I you say, just really hype I, it up. I like chocolate. Four. I, I would say I love chocolate. <laughs> I, I like, like it. it. That's no, what I love four chocolate. means. Okay. Yeah. Maybe uh, I'll go four and a half. I'm, I'm sticking with four. I'm wavering. That's good. Four that and a half. Good. You see it, get it. Yeah, definitely. If you're a fan of chocolate, if you like say. chocolate, uh, this is a chocolate porter. If you're mm. a fan, if you like that, if that even sounds remotely delicious, then you're gonna True. enjoy this. Yeah, because it does have a little bite of the porter too. So if you don't like dark beers, then you might not like this either. You know, no, you'd like it if you like. I, it. I think uh, I think that makes the difference too. Because what was the um, the shock top? Was it a stout or was it? It was a wheat. Chocolate wheat. Yeah, chocolate, chocolate wheat. wheat. That. Yeah, chocolate wheat. I don't remember. That definitely makes a difference because this porter is delicious. Mm -hmm. So it yeah, it's better with that that uh, tone of the porter beer itself. I'm going four and a half. Okay, hard four and a half. You I wavered. I said I wavered. Yeah, but you just like this is delicious. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going five. I don't think it's that good. I think you should because you. I don't think it's that good. Confusing me. Well, we'll figure out the rating scale and put exact like uh, descriptions of have them. Have to have like unique ones for each one of us because Marco clearly <laughs> loves this, but no, it's giving it a four now. <laughs> that's why. That's why we need that. Is that we are all on the same page as far as delicious, okay, great. I don't know. Maybe I'm used to four, like out of five stars. It's yeah, hard to shake the uh, yeah a little bit and think like we're going out of six now. So four and a half is not as high. Mm. <clears throat> but I stand with it. Four and a half. I'm proud of you. Thank you, Adam. Yes. Uh, you had some uh, some stuff. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. Um, yeah, no, we were all actually talking a little bit earlier about this. Um, but apparently it's come out that Infamous has not sold as well as Titanfall has. Um, but at the same time, we all brought up a good point in that uh, Titanfall is on more platforms including a platform that people already have. 
So there's been obviously the that it's been part of two platforms. What PC uh-huh. and Xbox 360. It's on and Xbox One as well, right? But Xbox One is the new platform, right? And so is PS4. Yeah, so uh-huh. that's like saying oh, it's exactly like saying that it came out on 362 because people have already had PCs. They don't need to necessarily buy a new PC to play Titanfall. Uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, PCs are kind of the the weird one out of that combination because you can just either upgrade it or if it's good enough as is, you can still run it or run it on a lower setting. Right. Mm-hmm. Can, if you have a PC that's basically the equivalent of a 360, you'd be able to run it on a that lower level of texture and all right. that type of stuff, right? right. Yeah. And it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Yeah, Marco, you <laughs> I, Yeah, I got it, it on 360, on... and right. uh, David has it on PC. Obviously, there's a huge graphical difference, uh, but, but that's the only difference. Right. I mean, you, you've played both, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's it. I yeah, mean, that's you've, it. You've seen how free it can get, and you've seen how... I don't know. It's probably not as low as it can get, but right. how toned down it can get for the 360. They really, the way that they try to um, avoid telling people about it, uh, uh, Microsoft, the way they try to avoid telling people about it, and then when you finally get to play it, you finally get your hands on it, and it's just like, you know, I, well, we talked, I mean, obviously there was a reason behind and them that's, not promoting That's actually it. part of my topic is, <clears throat> do you think that that was done uh, specifically in yes. order to keep that... Uh, on the Xbox One and yeah, keep no, the publicity no on that. No doubt about it. Yeah, because I mean, like Even I was delayed. Like now yeah. seems completely apparent why it was delayed. Right. Air mm-hmm. quotes. Right. Yeah. I mean, when I I'll bring it over here and you guys will be able to to see. Just I mean, it's it's really. I mean, um, there's some like if you move too fast and you run up on somebody, their the textures take a little while. Uh, honestly, that's really it. And obviously, it's not as pretty. I mean, on PC, it's running at 60 frames per second, mm-hmm. and it's fucking gorgeous. Mm-hmm. But on Xbox, it's really not that bad. I mean, I, it's I, I playable. Think... I've been playing it the whole time <laughs> I bought it. I think it's just impressive that they're able to fit all of the content. Mm-hmm. All of the con- the exact same that's content. That's another thing. The, the, everything about the game, the burn cards... Um, mm-hmm. The way that the story like moves through the multiplayer, uh, I match as make... far as like uh, like when the match starts, you're in the like the drop ship and you right. evacuate. Yeah, too, all that same is there. thing. All the whole it's the entire game. It just looks a little less pretty. That's it. And I and and I jump into games. I don't know what they're doing with those servers, but I mean, it just you know, I, I bow I bow to them because <laughs> I've never match made. I, I, my matches have never been so fast. I remember. I turned the game on. I remember how you uh, used to play like Call of Duties, and it would take you forever. Oh yeah, I'd be sitting there just like it. The thing would be uh, scrolling. That was and it the would worst. Just, I mean, it made everybody just like just fuck off, just on leave. You. Right. This and I'm in Titanfall, man. I've never waited more than a second. Honestly, the the game it just starts up immediately. It's a full game, six on six, every time. So which is cool. It makes it very uh, hopeful because like like I was telling you guys earlier, like I pre-ordered the Vita. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're porting the entire Borderlands 2 uh-huh. with DLC and everything onto the Vita, which is a huge game to right. just cr- crush down into a right. handheld mm-hmm. that's a little less powerful than a <clears throat> PS3. Right. So even the PS3 version was scaled down a little bit from PC, and yeah. then they took the PS3 version, and now they're scaling it down even more to make it run, like hopefully, like the Titanfall on a, on a 360. Right. right. Well, I heard that uh, Titanfall was originally intended for the Vita. Yeah. Yeah, no, I thought Whoa. It, was the PS3. it was. No, no, no. I, I read that it was intended for the Vita. Ooh, that the, the first concept. You can look it up. The first I, concept I I was. Uh, excuse me. The first concept was intended for the Vita. Interesting. <laughs> I never heard that. Yeah, hmm. I saw it. Okay. <laughs> I <laughs> swear it's to God. I swear to it's God. Be true. It's, it's gotta, gotta be, be true. true. It's on the internet. Yep. But uh, yeah, to your point. Uh, yeah, it was definitely deliberate because obviously they see uh, Microsoft sees it. They're trailing behind. PlayStation as far as just general sales right. and nobody wants the younger brother undercutting them with with you know mm-hmm. but Which, I mean if, if that was the case then they should have had a deal with Respawn and said look this has to be an Xbox One exclusive you can't put it on PC you can't put it on the last gen mm-hmm. we need it for Xbox One there was too much money in it for them to do well that. for Respawn yeah yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. They, they well, wouldn't no, sign no, that deal. No. They're, it became an exclusive because Microsoft went, hmm, we're interested. Here's a lot of money. Right, right, so right. So they could have very easily been like, here's a lot of money, but Xbox One. Right. Leave it on the one. 
Yeah, they should, I mean, if if they were to do that, <clears throat> I don't think Respawn would have been happy with that because Respawn already seemed to not be happy with the Xbox One exclusivity. Right. Hence them only signing the deal to have that very first game Xbox exclusive right. and PC. Right, because they've already said that uh, Titanfall Two is going to be everything. Yeah, right. Which is what they intended originally, <laughs> and you know. But you also got to think whether it sells on the 360 or the obviously they want to sell more Xbox Ones. They yeah. thought that yeah. this was going to be their console seller. Mm-hmm. But which the, I mean, it has been. Yeah, it's it's, 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 it's helped. It's definitely helped. But in but the grand scheme of I'm things, I'm not going to buy a new console for a I'm, game I'm, that's on a console. Or everything else. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Well, I mean, I didn't do it. <laughs> I bought it on 360. <laughs> what but, I um, think they could have done that would have been a bit better is if they could have somehow come out with the 360 version earlier and had the deal that they did with a lot of the uh, the PlayStation and ha- right Xbox have One the games, uh, the upgrade thing right, that for they 10 did. bucks or yeah. whatever. And yeah, I think that would have worked out great. Everybody think, would have been happy. But the the allure of having an Xbox One exclusive... Right. For so many months. Right. And, yeah. and then you realize it's not really Xbox One exclusive. That I think that hurt them, was mm-hmm. the fact that they tried to make it seem like it was an Xbox One exclusive, and then you find out, like, it's not exclusive to this. Like, you can get it on the 360 and the PC. You it doesn't even it's matter. Like a Microsoft exclusive. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, what I'm saying is, like, that hurt more than them admitting like look get it on the 360 get it on the pc get it on the one they should have like embraced that as opposed to like trying to sweep it under the rug like right. it wasn't yeah, happening yeah. a smarter technique would have been like hey we're microsoft we're cool we got these cool games right buy these cool games on whatever console you own right mm-hmm. exactly like yeah. look we made this you know it doesn't matter what you got just buy it because this game's awesome and we're awesome. Like they would have been cool by association right. as opposed to like, mm, no. don't worry about that. I mean, the only yeah. reason I knew it came out, well, obviously when it came out on 360 there, or there was rumors that they were making it on 360, it made the rounds on the internet. But if you weren't really paying attention, the only way you would have known is if you were keeping up with Titanfall. Right. And a lot and, of the, uh, the websites that review these games, they were worried about it because they didn't get to even see a playable version. Yeah, of it no one got to see a demo. Or, or, it's yeah. just more evidence that they're just they were hiding it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is so shitty for the company that came out with that version of it. You know, like I'm sure they wanted it to be Blue publicized. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they yeah, exactly. I mean, and they're getting shafted from Microsoft. It's like that's that's a crappy deal, right? I mean, somebody you know, no, it's I, not because they it, it sold very well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, everything ended up okay. But that's I'm saying, fine. if I was if I was Blue Point, I'd be like, all right, you know what? Well, Fuck Microsoft because yeah. we're gonna make a great the game. best game. We're we gonna can. make well, we're gonna make the same game. Who who <laughs> who commissioned them to port it to the 360? Was it Microsoft or was it Respawn? Probably Microsoft. So I mean, at the uh, somebody is is saying you know we need it on 360, and somebody else is going, well, we do, but don't tell anybody because mm-hmm. we need to sell these ones. They're not shipping like we thought they were. Right. I mean, oh, that's that Microsoft. Thing. <laughs> I mean, that's their fault. They've been a PR mess since the debut of Xbox. Yeah, since so. day one, mm-hmm. it's been, since day one, the one. The love of one. Yeah. The, right. It's it's been pretty bad. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of want them to get it together. But done since the launch is just stupid. Yep. Like everything about everything. It. Just hey, this is TV, 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 and then yeah. you can get the day one edition console. Right. And like PlayStation, PlayStation is just like, well, we got. A PlayStation Four, it's coming out. And it's all about games, all about you indies. You get a camera right. if you want with it, or whatever. Yeah. Or, and you can, or whatever. Or whatever. Right. Or you can no share your games right. with your friends. If you want? I don't care. That's been their whole attitude. Is like Sony's just been like, whatever, man. Just do what you want. We're just giving you like the utmost technology that you can have. And everybody's eating it up. Hundred dollars cheaper. Whatever. Yeah. And Xbox is. It just. It just feels like Xbox is trying too hard. Microsoft is just trying trying to push shit on people. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm I'm hopeful for the future of Xbox because they got a new head of Xbox now, which <laughs> was the guy that was head of uh, their sort of games, I guess, games department and development. Um, so it should with, be the only department. Well, you know, it's it's all these consoles have become more than just a video game playing unit. Yeah. It's just the fact of the matter. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation got ahead because they labeled themselves as the video game. Well, console, right. I mean, right? that's the Which way you're the supposed opposite. to do it. They learned because PS3 was mm-hmm. not. Right. Right. That. Yeah, right. That's true. They, that's they true. learned a lot of lessons. It from only me. does everything. Remember? Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Except cross game chat. Right. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Five hundred yeah. U.S. dollars. <laughs> I, mm. It looks like they learned a lot from the from the PS3 from the they price did. tag. Down to the way that they put it out, mm-hmm. everything. Of course, and Microsoft 
did not. I think what happens is every other generation, the opposite company starts to pull ahead because they learn from what they did before. And then the other corporation that did succeed in the <laughs> last generation goes, let's do bigger, 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 better, you know? Yeah. Which is exactly what happened with PlayStation 2. They yeah. came out with the 3, and then they, they thought it was going to be an all-in-one machine. Yeah. And then just the opposite of what Xbox did, because their, their machine um, was kind of crappy, and then they just pretty much revamped it and upgraded it so much that it was just straight games. And then after the fact... Mm-hmm. Is when they started bringing in all this extra content, like yeah. you get movies on it, music, all this other crap. That was way down the line from the initial release. Mm-hmm. Whereas Sony was like, day one, you're gonna be able to play Blu-rays on it and download movies and music, and people were just they just weren't ready for it. Which, when you take that into account, really bodes well for the Xbox One if you think about it. Maybe a year and a half, maybe two years from now, oh, yeah. when people are like hooking everything up to one console, yeah. they're gonna want the one, right? Mm-hmm. And probably PS4 is going to get like a new model, maybe like a slim model that I'm has sure. the same HDMI right, pass right. through I'm that sure. the Xbox One has. Right. Yeah. You hook it up to your cable box, and it's now a DVR as well. I think, though, at the end of the day, it really falls down to the games. And PS4 was just winning in that department, just just point blank period. Like, if you want to just get down to the bare bones of it, mm-hmm. in- Infamous 4, and uh, what was the, the game that you got when you first got the console? Shadow Zone. Kill Zone. Kill, Kill Zone. zone. Shadow what? what why did, Shadow why did I, Fall? Right, okay. I mixed that up. But it was a, I mean, it was a good game. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was a console seller, Absolutely but it was definitely not. a good Absolutely game. Absolutely not. It was the start of a maybe a franchise for right. them, but it definitely wasn't a console seller. But I mean, what did what did Xbox start out with? Uh, Dead Rising? Yeah. Dead Part Rising. Part 3? 3, yeah. Rise. With, Rise. Uh, mm, falls weird. and rises, man. <laughs> Falling and rising. Mm. I mean, it just like when you get down to it, like people buy it, you know, you bought a you buy a console and what can you play on it? Like if you weren't if you just wanted a good first person shooter, like play, PlayStation two was the way to go. As far as like what they offered for people. Yeah, when it dropped because they had that's what I'm uh, saying. When it first when it first came two. out. Uh yeah. For what, PS two? Three. Oh, for PS3. I'm right. just saying, like, as far as, like, over the course of, like, do people become faithful to their consoles? Yeah. Well, that's that's what happened with uh, Microsoft and Xbox, yeah, too. they see you know? rolling your eyes because it's stupid to think that yeah. way. Yeah. Which, yeah, I, I mean, you see it in every comment section of every video game-based website, or even entertainment-based website. It's retarded. It's, people arguing about stuff it, like that. It seems like people... Like work for these companies, right. like they have something more at stake other than if, I bought this thing. What if it is? <laughs> it could be. It is it two could people be. from each company yeah. just being PR. This is why this console is better. This is why this console is so funny. <laughs> I and mean, they're just, they're just like, don't don't make it professional. Just just make it as stupid and internet as you can. Be as real as you can. Be I mean, as internet as you can. Outside of religion and sports, I don't see people that are more pledged to a certain brand or a certain cause than in video games yeah it's crazy it's pathetic that's what it is <laughs> so it's a little sad i mean how I mean, they, everything has something to offer and you know? I, i'm just saying like how does one console succeeding at something make your purchase any less value to right. you you know like right unless one console completely sweeps and like kills off the other console right. that you and bought it, like, that console gets it loses support completely. Right. And but but even it, still, like, gonna happen. even if you believe, like uh, the Dreamcast, for instance. I was going to say, unless you I the bought Dreamcast. the Dreamcast. It was awesome. Yeah. I yeah. love. I had one too. And I, and I know there's a lot of people. It's like, like I love the Dreamcast. There was nothing wrong with it, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. It just got, you know, it just didn't hold up. I don't know why it didn't. It was too ahead of its time. It was a little ahead of its time. Man. Maybe that's what it that was. Online gaming. It yeah. was it was fantastic, man. Everything about that, the down to the the memory card, you could play games mm-hmm. on the memory card. Well, Tamagotchi from uh, on, Sonic. Okay, <laughs> if you played NBA NBA or, or, or NFL Two K, you could call plays on the memory card. So you know how I, if you ever play Madden, my my plays are on the screen, and so mm-hmm. is my opponent's plays. They're all on the screen. So if I'm looking at your controller or looking at the screen, right. I know what play you're gonna call. Mm-hmm. On the Dreamcast, it was in your memory card. You know how vital that is to getting ahead of your opponent? Mm-hmm. Like, that's a simple thing that they still have not done to this day. Yeah. We're talking about 2014, and they still 
you're you're my play and your player on the same well, screen. Where do you think the idea for like all of this connected things with like your cell phone and the Wii Vita, U, Wii U, the Wii right. U, all right. that stuff? Like it all started with, from what I know, the Sega console. Yeah, it looks like that's where it came from. You know, like it's just ahead of its time. And when Dreamcast came out, it wasn't competing directly with like a PS2 or anything. It was GameCube that it was competing. Mm-hmm. I don't see how it didn't blow GameCube out of the water. Well, Other than Nintendo. Game, because that was Sega's first console in years. Right. All they had was Genesis. Sonic. Well, yeah, to sell it. Sonic. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the 2K series. The 2K series, yeah. And basketball. What? Chance Space Channel 5. <laughs> yeah. Crazy Taxi. Crazy, Crazy Taxi. Taxi. Crazy Taxi. That's yeah. it. And a bunch of like lesser known titles like Power Stone. Mm. Power Stone was, was so, so awesome. good. So good. I love Power Stone. Great man. game. Gotta get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. But Nintendo already had established franchises. Yeah. Like yeah. Zelda, Mario, all this, all of the yeah. classics. All, all they had to do was make sequels of games from the N sixty four, which is what and they're doing yeah, now. Right. To this day. Right. But I mean, Still. GameCube. GameCube had great games though. It was with that console that they yeah, tried. They've had a couple. Not, not Nintendo franchise. Um, Resident Evil. But that was multi-platform. Oh, yeah, I can... it didn't start out. That was exclusive to. Uh, Res- you talking Game about Resident 4. Evil Four? Four. Yeah, that's it though. Yeah, four. And then they did the. Uh, uh, what was it? Veronica. Code Veronica, but that was on Dreamcast. I remember playing that on Dreamcast. I believe. Okay. I'm what what about else? That. What else was exclusive to? GameCube. Uh, GameCube. Uh, they're mostly all the. Don't new- say Animal Crossing. Oh no no no! It, that's not that's <laughs> not my point. It's that they tried to go outside of their box a little bit. Um, only a little bit. Only a little most bit. of their successful games were what? Star Fox, Smash Brothers, Luigi's Mansion, uh, mm-hmm. Mario Galaxy, and Sunshine. Mario Sunshine. Galaxy, Galaxy, Galaxy was, was on, um, yeah, we. but uh, Sunshine, Mario Sunshine. Sunshine yep. All of those were all Nintendo branded games. Wind Waker. <laughs> yeah. Great game. And, but they're all, you know, That's besides all the under point, that though. umbrella. Okay, but what else? Because Sega, all Sega had was Sonic. That's it. As their flagship, yeah. I mean, they didn't release anything else. I I don't think any other game. I mean, the 2K series was... No, I mean, the 2K series had... Well, I I think when it first started out, it was a Sega exclusive. Like Mm -hmm. the 2K1. Yeah, yeah. 2K, 2K1, 2K2. It was their answer to, like, Madden. Right. And And then then it became multi-platform once the Sega... I mean, once the Genesis... uh, Fuck. Once the Dreamcast, <laughs> once the Dreamcast died, that's when it became multi-platform because right. 2K became just a, a straight-up developer mm-hmm. and started making games for everybody. And they had a um, Sea Bass Man, <laughs> Sea Man, Sea Man. Yeah, yeah, that that game was awesome. It was weird. So yeah, weird. hell yeah, it was. Thanks, Japan. Very Japanese. What, what about that one game? Ah, it's kind of hard to describe. The dude was purple and he had like a big jester's hat on and he, like a fucking could fly through the. You know oh, what I'm talking about? I know about? what you're talking about. Can you can visualize Something it, right? right? Something. Yeah. That oh, game was pretty big. Damn. They they we'll really advertised that game. Something Nights, maybe? <clears throat> yeah, it's something Nights. Anyway. I'm gonna Google it now. Um, um Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 were some of the best games I've ever played. Right. Really good updates on the Sonic formula. But I mean to kind of pull it back, I mean that's kinda of, I mean, I still don't re- I still don't really know why the, the Dreamcast failed. Like you said, it was ahead of its time, but I feel like that should have helped it sell more well i i think that first of all like you were saying with the xbox one people may not be ready for all that technology right now yeah second point is that within that you have to consider that soon after that dreamcast came out ps2 came out and, and ps2 was... crushed everything yeah. ps2 all in the world right yeah. then xbox came out it did all right and then halo came out for it with that and it was I huge. think th- that is where the concept of a console seller, quote unquote, mm-hmm. came from was yeah. Halo. Yeah. Because PS2 was just like, fuck it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they had we a bunch of games. Right, what exactly. What do we need? You know, then Xbox came out and it was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then Halo came out and it was like, oh, okay. Well, that's Halo, why we need to buy it. Halo was uh, actually <laughs> debuted with the Xbox. So that, that was from day one. I didn't, I didn't get an Xbox until Fable came out. Mm. That's when I got one. Yeah. So, I, Halo didn't do much for me, but I'm in the minority yeah. as far as Xbox yeah, yeah. players. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I have uh, Halo 4 and I haven't played it. <laughs> You're ridiculous. It's, it's just sitting at my house. I You're a crazy it. person. I, you know what else I got? Mm. I have Tomb Raider. Oh. I haven't played it. 
Do it, do it. I, I beat it. It's fun. Yeah. It's a fun game, yeah. It looks fun, but I just I don't really. Good start of a new franchise, I'd say. Okay, yeah. I think you're thinking of Nights into Dreams. Uh, that sounds familiar. Yes, yep. yes, that's, that's it. One. That's exactly what I'm Sega talking Saturn, about. Saturn, but I can see that. But it was on Dreamcast. Yeah, they right. made a Dreamcast game for it. But yeah, that was it. That was mm-hmm. that was one of the things that was really big. I remember um, when the Dreamcast came out, they had a commercial for the uh, what happens in the commercial is like the, the triangle button on the uh, Dreamcast itself where the light, where you know how it's powered on, mm-hmm. the power on button. Like the commercial goes inside there. Oh, Ready to Rumble was another Dreamcast yeah. game. Yep. Yeah. Cause that, that's awesome. Yeah, that's why right. I thought of that because like when you go inside, it's like a nightclub, and like Allen Iverson was there, and the guy, <laughs> the guy with the afro from Ready to Rumble was there, and Sonic is running around, and they were all just in this nightclub yeah. together, and it was like Sega Dreamcast, and like mm-hmm. it was really cool. I mean, yeah. it really made me buy it. Honestly, it made me buy it. That so. was that was a good time. Yeah, I think that was the first console that I got for myself. Like my parents got for me. Yeah, I'd say. Because the other ones I just got from my, you know, my brother getting an N64, my brother yeah. getting a Super Nintendo, my brother having a Nintendo. <laughs> I grew up on those, but that was the first one. I'm like, Mom, Dad, I need this thing. Yeah, yeah. That 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 case was for me the the PS2. Mm-hmm. I remember the Dreamcast was in the living room, and then the PS2. Uh, it was one, it was on my birthday. My dad woke me up early, and he was like, "We're gonna get, we're gonna go get it." <laughs> yes, finally. Thank That's you, what Dr. I'm talking Lisa. about. <laughs> so we finally went and got it, unboxed it in my room, set oh. it up. There's uh, nothing I mean, like the that. unboxing. Oh, of it, I mean, come on. There's nothing better than that. Ripping that, ripping that little strip <laughs> to open up the, the box. The tamper tape. <laughs> yep. Tamper strip. You, you <laughs> smell the plastic oh, when you first open it's it. It's great. Ugh. It's great. Gundam man. side story zero zero seven. Oh yes, that was a great game. Yep. Guilty um, Gear started on there. Yeah, yeah. Guilty Gear was on there. Uh, oh, moving back to GameCube, Rogue Squ- Squadron, Rogue Squadron, Rogue Star Squadron. Wars, Rogue. Squadron. Oh right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you're playing on Hoth. Yeah, they really tried with those fucking Star Wars games, man. They had a couple good ones. I, mm-hmm. I heard that they were working on a Darth Maul game. Recently, yeah, that was more recent. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jet. Grind Radio, Jet Set Radio? Jet Set Radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was on Dreamcast. Jet Set Radio Future came out later on. Mm-hmm. Great game. <clears throat> I'm, um, Shinobi, but that came out on PS2. That was after the yeah. Dreamcast hit. Shenmue. Shenmue, Shenmue was on there. Right, right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a big one for me. I'm trying Marvel to think what else Capcom I had 2 on there. Yep. was on there. I that think was... It, it was on the PS2, was it? Um, I don't think it was, because I remember I trying know. to find it when, I, when we had the bootleg version. Uh-huh. There was a lot of uh, good fighting games on that because I remember Virtual having Fighter. Virtual Fighter. Uh, SNK was on there too. Yep, mm-hmm. played a lot of that. Um, but anyway, yeah, my my point is we don't really know who's going to be the winner because these consoles, these newer consoles, are so new that we don't know if the technology of Xbox One is really going to be a big advantage later on down the line. Yeah, where it's just something we don't see quite yet. Yeah, no, I definitely think that Microsoft is thinking long term. Which is, I mean, in the short term, it's not smart because people are looking at it like, you know, look at PS4 is blowing you out of the water, man. What are you, what are you gonna do? But they're, they're, I hope that the people at Microsoft are going, you know, they're looking at their cards and they're going, we got this. Don't mm-hmm. worry about it. Okay, it may look bad now. Right. Give it a year, you'll see us. Well, a big thing is that people are reporting is that uh, recently, PlayStation Four uh, actually sold seven million units worldwide, uh-huh. which is Huge, yeah, huge. Considering how long they've been out, so I guess I mean that makes sense. Yeah, but I mean I don't. I still I think we've talked about it before on the podcast, but I still don't know anyone who owns an Xbox One yet. No one on my Facebook. I've never seen anyone talking about it. Yeah, no one personally. I've never seen anyone know, talk no, about no, you're it. Right, because I thought your boy Eddie had one. He has a PS4. Everyone I know has a PS4, mm-hmm. and it it doesn't seem like that's slowing down people buying PS4s. Like they're still having trouble shipping a, the amount that people are demanding. Yeah. So, and it, you know, it, sense. it dropped in Japan, and honestly, they've been saying it hasn't been selling as well as they want it to in Japan. But there's not really strong Japanese games out for it yet. So. No, no tentacle monster porn. That's true. Sorry. What are you gonna do, Adam? Well, hopefully, we'll be pushing out these podcasts well, as far as they demand them. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> Yeah, that was real bad. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that 
that was the segue to close. <laughs> it was good. It was close. I, was, I liked it. I liked well, it. maybe we can close <laughs> like, now. I, I saw the wheels turning on that. It came out and it was mush. It was good. You want to try it again? You want to give it another shot? Because I thought of it way before. Like, when yep. you, you started talking about it. they can't make PS4s as fast as they want to. Right. And I went, but we could make these podcasts as much as The words were in there. They were just scrambled. Words to close. And on that note, I think it's time to say goodnight to everyone. This was the One Beer In Podcast. The first beer was shit, but the second beer was delicious. Yum, yum. My name is Mr. Dupa. Adam Obesis Rodriguez. Bye-bye. Drunk Dave. Catch me on Instagram at Fact and Nonverba. What about the underscores? There's underscores. In there. There's an underscore after the fact of nonverba, mm-hmm. one word. It's Latin. You can look it up. Uh, you can catch me at uh, Dupa Get Butt. And All I, one word. I'm at Obesius, as you think. Uh, this was the One Beer and Podcast. Thank you guys for listening. Have a great night. Ah. Oh, yeah. And uh, well, I don't know the URL of it. Is it just One Beer in at All right, WordPress? guys. Uh, basically, you can find us at One Beer in on Facebook, on, uh, let's see, WordPress, on. We need to make a Twitter. Yeah, we can make a Twitter, too. We're make it. Not we yet. Look for us on Twitter later on. Yeah, we'll make a Twitter. Uh, we're gonna make a Twitter. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make on yeah. SoundCloud as well, uh, and also YouTube. Most importantly, we put all of yes. these podcasts all on the YouTube. major social medias. Just look up one beer in. Just Google one beer in. You'll find us. Bye.